Okay, T.I., check this out, right? I'm getting ready to break down to you what this gang stalking thing is really all about and how they're justifying all of this harassment and stalking and the reason why it seems like it takes place everywhere you go in society. It seems like all of these people are involved. I'm getting ready to break it down for you right here in this video. And if you, it'll be smart if you are really being targeted like this for you to watch the entire video. Listen closely because you definitely will learn something. Um, it's going to be a five part video. I'm going to split them all up and I'm going to go into detail and give you a true understanding of what this gang stalking thing is really all about. All right. So um, I'm going to start off here. First of all, I'm on this website, CISA. This gives you uh, an overview, an understanding of the critical infrastructure structure sectors here in the United States. Now, why is that important? The critical infrastructure pretty much are industries and sectors in our society that if they were, uh, you know, attacked in some kind of way and damaged, it will disrupt um, the country. It will disrupt business, finances, it will disrupt everyday life. So therefore, they're considered critical infrastructure sectors. That's where you get the name InfraGuard. Okay, that's where InfraGuard. InfraGuard is responsible with in conjunction with the FBI. They are responsible for protecting the critical infrastructure. So that's where you get InfraGuard. They're guarding the infrastructure. Now, InfraGuard works with the FBI with all of the companies that are under uh, these sectors that I'm going to go over with you in this video. Okay. So there are 16 uh, sectors here listed that are considered critical infrastructure. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over um, about four or five of these uh, sectors. I'm going to highlight them and I'm going to break them down and I'm going to explain to you uh, how they are being weaponized uh, to target us on a day to day basis. I'm going to discuss what industries um, and what parts of uh, what industries and what sectors we come in contact with every single day that they're able to use to target us and and, and able to and this right here gives them uh, plausible deniability to say that they're doing these things and they have us on these lists to protect us uh, well to protect infrastructure from us so whenever we interact with these different industries and these different sectors of society whenever we are anywhere near these different places um, it activates because our, our our location is being tracked so whenever we come into contact with any of these these uh, industries um, they have uh, the legal right the, with, the, with the laws they have written in they have the legal right to go through these different processes that we go through and what it what it what it translates to for us as targeted individuals is gang stalking with the harassment sabotage um, agitation all the different things that we go through it comes from this it comes from InfraGuard and the FBI and Homeland Security working together with private companies and uh, you know EMS and different things like that around the community to target us and when it's really supposed to be about terrorism and protecting uh, the critical this, this critical infrastructure from terrorism so all they have to do is uh, call us uh, a Homeland uh, uh, a domestic terrorist who was a threat to the homeland and now it's on all right so I'm gonna go through I'm gonna read these 16 sectors to you and then I'm gonna highlight uh, about five of them to show you how it affects us from day to day okay so first we have the chemical sector um, the Department of Homeland Security is designated as the sector risk management agency for uh, the chemical sector. Secondly, we have the commercial facility sector, and this is one of the ones that I'm actually going to highlight um, in this uh, presentation. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security is designated as the sector risk management agency for the commercial facility sector, which includes a diverse range of sites that draw large crowds of people for shopping, entertainment, lodging or business third we have the communication sector all right we also have critical manufacturing sector 
dam sector, defense industry base sector, energy services sector. Yeah, so the energy sector uh, pretty much, you know, deals with your, you know, your, uh, your, uh, what do you call it? Your electricity bill, your power bill, those companies. Um, and I've heard things about the smart meters they use uh, pertaining to gang stalking. You can look into that yourself. Um, next up will be the financial services sector. Uh, that's another, uh, that's dealing with the banks, um, your money. Um, you know, they monitor all of that. For instance, if you put a certain amount of money in the bank, they, they alert uh, the FBI. So just imagine if you're a targeted individual, how much alerting and monitoring is going on with your uh, your banking. But I'm not going to go into depth in all of these. Like I said, I'm going to highlight uh, about five, four or five of them um, in the presentation, though. But next up, you have government facilities. So any government building you go into, you already know. Just like like I said, with at the bank, all of those employees are connected. They all get the alerts when you come. Same thing with government buildings. Any of these buildings you go in, all the way from the janitor, all the way up to the highest uh, government service uh, uh, employee in that building, they all are connected to this program and will absolutely participate in your gang stalking if you come around them. Okay. Next, you have health care and, and the public health sector, which is crazy. With all these doctors and these nurses that you run into in the, in, in, in the parking lot at Target or you run it into the Dollar Tree real quick. And, you know, you just running around picking up some food from Chipotle. All of these people are around you and they're part and they get they're getting the alerts and they're doing these different tactics that you have been uh, sensitized to over and over and over again as you go throughout your day. Next up, you have. Uh, information technology sector so you know what that's all about the information technology sector you can look deeper into that if you need to nuclear reactors uh materials and waste sector so you know look into that if you need if you if, if you know it's pretty self-explanatory what that's all about you also have the transportation system that's another one that i'm going to go into depth about because a lot of people ride the metro the subway system and, and one thing that's really stands out with this uh, section is ride share is added on to this. So people who claim to be dealing with issues uh, pertaining to gang stalking with Uber and Lyft, you're, you're not you're not delusional. And I'm going to break it down. Um, also, last but not least, we have the water and uh, uh, wastewater system section. So you can look deeper into that if you uh, are interested. All right. So next, I'm going to go into detail with a few of these to give you guys an understanding of why you're feeling you're targeting in this gang stalking uh, situation everywhere you go at all times. Peace. OK, so the first sector that I'm going to focus on is called commercial facilities sector. All right. Now, most of these commercial facilities are within the private sector and when i say private sector i mean like private businesses you know we're talking taco bell mcdonald's sprint walmart uh ford motor company uh mercedes benz if they operate in the united states um starbucks uh different you know things of that nature um motel six the marriott all right, so this is the commercial facilities sector. This is one of the critical infrastructure sectors that this program that we're being targeted by, they're supposedly trying to protect this sector of society from us, targeted individuals. And weirdly, they use harassment tactics to do so. So... Now, within the commercial facility sector, you have hotels and motels. Now, many people who are targeted individuals have described uh, when you go to hotels, motels, um, they you're, you're harassed. Immediately, people move into the rooms around you and they start to perform the harassment tactics that are um, protocol within your personal portfolio, portfolio of uh, harassment. Um, me, myself personally, with the, my, my gang stalking program is centered around numbers. Okay. 
So there's a certain I have a core set of five numbers that they use whenever that those numbers are on a clock or uh, they put these numbers on license plate tags, on on jerseys, on, on people when they walk around with these numbers in front of me. You know, all, all of these type of situations. Okay, so what I what I noticed was uh, when I would go to hotels and motels, I would get the room number would always have one of these numbers involved. So let's say, for instance, the number twenty seven, which is one of the most prom, which is pretty much the most prominent number in my program. This is how it all started was a number twenty seven. So anytime I go to a hotel or a motel, um, my hotel room will be number three twenty seven or I'll be right next door to a hotel room with the number twenty seven in it. If that gives you any understanding, it makes it a little more clear. It's just they have to have that number uh, in my line of sight, in my conscience, in my psyche. All right. At all times. So once you show up to these locations and you give them your ID, you give them your name, they they uh, they they have a, a protocol on what they need to do uh, to you. Now, I don't even think they even need our ID to start because, you know, I'll, I'll explain later how I've shown in my videos and I go to different drive throughs restaurants where either I'm doing deliveries or if I'm picking up something for myself. Even when I go inside, not even just a drive through, they will always serve me when one of these numbers are on the clock. You understand? So pretty much if I'm in line, they'll coordinate the lines. It's, it's so strange, people, how they do this. But they court. I've shown video. You can see for yourself on my page. But they'll coordinate the line and have me at the window when one of the numbers in my program are on the clock. So it's the same thing. So they don't necessarily need my ID when I go to the hotels and motels. They're alerted probably when I'm within a certain amount of feet of the hotel that it's possible I'm going to come there and get a room and here's what here's what needs to be done. All right. And as I as as I was a side note, as I'm doing this right now, I'm being gang stalked at this very moment. Um, but I'm not even going to get into that. All right. So hotels and motels. Yes. Once you get to these hotels and motels. There is an alert that goes out and yes, they will fill up rooms and every all around you with perps and they will do bang on the wall, do noise campaigns. Um, you'll probably be put like they do with me. They always put me in a room right next to a camera. I'm pretty sure that's protocol so they can see who, who's coming in and out of my hotel rooms. Um, when I leave, when I leave, when, I, when I'm when I'm in the room, when I leave out, you know, these are certain things that they do um, within the within the hotels and motels section of this commercial facility sector. Um, so, yeah, like I said, they put me near, they always put me near uh, the cameras or put me somewhere where it's a highly visible room so everyone can watch what's going on easily and they'll surround me with perps. All right, so next up on this list that I want to highlight is theme parks and amusement parks. All right. So if you go to Disneyland or depending on where you are in the country, Six Flags, Bush Gardens, you know, all of these theme parks, Disney World, um, Great Adventures, wherever you are in the country. I don't know where you are listening from, but I think you get the idea. Again, when you get to these locations, uh, all of the employees, the security um, of the park, uh, whatever police officers are there, um, everyone knows that you are there. And you are to be targeted based upon whatever protocol is uh, written out in the instructions on what to do. So you'll experience the same type of gang stalking experiences at any amusement park or theme park that you visit. Even even has parades here. If you go to a parade, they'll you know you'll be uh, singled out. You know by security officers, you'll get extra attention. And you know with me. If, if if your situation is like me, they'll have certain things that they do uh, to harass you, um, to get your attention to whatever, whatever the harassment aspect is supposed to be. I just don't understand still how um, harassing us and trying to rile us up is protecting the infrastructure. I mean, I, I assume it's just so we our consciousness will be on the fact that we're being watched and they're on us at all times. But. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. You know, it's, it doesn't make a lot of sense what the way that they're going about this, if that's what their their concern is. 
All right, but I'm going to go to the next one. Arenas, stadiums, zoos, museums. So if you go to the your, your, the local, you go to your a basketball game, right? So you go see a, a college game. You want to go see uh, Duke play. You live in North Carolina. You want to go see Duke. Or maybe you live in Chicago. You want to go see the Bulls. Or, you know, you know, or a stadium, right? You want to go to an NFL game and watch the Kansas City Chiefs play. You know, uh, maybe you live down in Dallas. You want to go watch the Dallas Cowboys play a game. Any of these arenas that you that you visit, even if it's a college arena, you know, maybe you want to go see Oklahoma or Miami or you know, who's good in these days, Alabama. And you're a targeted individual, but you're a fan of the team. And you spent all your money, you saved up or whatever you did. You got the money. You want to go support the team. You got the jersey on. You're excited. You just want to go have fun like everyone else, you know, and you got your, your little styrofoam hand with the big one putting up, you know, you, you understand what I mean. You know, you have ready to have a good time, but that's going to be short lived because you're going to know if you're a target individual and you know about your targeting and you know the patterns, they're going to perp you more than likely someone who's sitting near you. They're going to be sitting or within your line of sight. They're going to be doing the different things that are associated in your program, which we call triggers. They're going to be around trying to trigger you. You're going to deal with uh, security, probably giving you extra attention. A police officer might decide to post up near you and just stand there the whole game around where you are. And every so often glance over at you while his hand is probably on his service weapon. You understand? Um you're, as you buy your ticket, especially if you buy it online, but it probably doesn't even matter, even if you go buy it in person. But most of us would do it online this day and age. Your ticket, um, they're going to know where you're sitting, so they're going to have everything already in place for you from the moment you arrive. Okay? It's going to be on. So that takes away your enjoyment of that. Just like your, your theme park and your amusement park, you might want to take your kids and all. They take away the enjoyment of that with this. Okay? And the sad part about this, a lot of us, like myself, do not belong on this list. There's no way in hell, no way at all that we should be being dealt with like this. But and they just want to take the air out of our lives. And it's just horrible what they're doing. And something has to change. OK, so I'm going to go. It says zoos and museums. You want to take your kids to the zoo. You want to take your kids to the museum and have a different experience. You want to get them cultured and go to a museum and so that, you know, have some educational stuff. You want to have them have a good time at the zoo to see the animals. Maybe you even want to be a chaperone at your kid's elementary school and you want to go with, the, you know, ride on a school bus with them to the, to the zoo, to the museum. And, you know, you're trying to volunteer, being a good parent, being a good citizen. You're going to be perped. They're going to they, because they have they're all connected to this program within the commercial facility sector. OK, within this with the, within the critical infrastructure. So therefore, therefore, all of the employees, all of the security officers and and other people who are just visiting the museum, zoo, the arena, the stadium, whatever job they have, nurses, maybe a doctor, garbage man, bus driver. You'll see down this list. Everybody is involved with this thing. So they're all going to be in that space doing the different tactics to try to trigger you um, into into um, lashing out pretty much. They're going to do the exact same exact tactics that you experience as you just go through your day to day life as a targeted individual. It's no it's, it's going to be no break. They don't care if your children are there. They don't care if you're there at the game, spent the hundreds of dollars for some tickets and buying all the expensive beers and you're just trying to have fun like everyone else. They're going to be there to ruin that experience for you. And it's not just the people who work in the arena or just the security there. Like, again, like I said, it's going to be the other citizens that are also in that same space as you, because more than likely they're working in one of these sectors and one of these industries that are connected through this InfraGuard FBI um, situation where they're supposed to be protecting the infrastructure, um, but protecting it is protecting it from you. And by doing that, they're just harassing you. So that's that's the that's their method. All right. Apartment and apartment and or condominium buildings. So you live in an apartment building. You're going to be harassed. 
<laughs> you got a cut. You live in a condominium building. You know, you're going to be targeted by other people in the building, of course, because because of their job, they usually they're probably connected or they've been approached by law enforcement or someone representing the InfraGuard FBI program and telling them that, hey, you're just you're some threat to society and you need to, and, 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 and in order to for the national safe security of the country, they're going to tell that person, we need you to do this, that or the third. And in my personal case, what I've experienced, and this this has happened in my personal apartment here in South Florida, the last apartment that I had, they moved in a lot of uh, actually at the time they moved in a lot of Haitian immigrants in every uh, apartment around me. And they proceeded to gang stalk and do all the different tactics. That's when I first started noticing things. Also, with apartments and condominium buildings and with the hotels and all of that, same thing. I traveled abroad. I went out to South America and, you know, the first one that I arrived at, they, they got it going. I was there not even an hour and it started slamming the doors whenever the numbers on my and my program were on the clock in and out, slamming doors, making all kind of extra noise, you know, just doing all of the tactics to harass me, similar to what they do here in the United States. And then that proceeded to happen at every single hotel. And that first place where they did that, I left. And, luck, you know, luckily, Airbnb is good about that kind of thing. I got fully refunded. I got a nice credit and everything. It, just, it worked out financially, um, but it, it happened at every location. And then every other location I went to from then on while I was in the country for about two months, they would have someone with a hammer just happen to need to bang, bang for all hours during the day, like eight hours, an eight hour work day. They, they paid someone to bang a hammer and they had plausible deniability because they is maintenance. Oh, we just happened to be working on whatever, 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 just banging, 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 banging. Every, every hotel that I was going to or Airbnb, they started doing that. Um, during my trip overseas in spring 2021. All right. Now, also self-storage. So I currently have a storage unit. So I have a personal experience with that. Um, my personal storage unit that I have, um, once I uh, first got there, it was OK. It was cool. It was a brand new facility. Wasn't a lot of people there. All of a sudden it turned into the most crowded uh storage unit that you're gonna find i mean every time i go there morning noon and night it's filled up with people it's hard to find somewhere to park it's people coming in and out moving all kinds of junk out i mean it's just all kinds of just and then they're also performing all of the tactics pulling up or pulling off at the times associated in my program um the 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 uh, the, the woman who works there the main employee you know she participates whenever i come she has she just appears to be picking up this out of nowhere, she has to pick up trash or do something around me when one of the numbers in my program are on the clock. So if I get there at 125, you better believe once that 27 gets on the clock, 127, she's going to appear and she's going to start doing all of the gang stalking tactics that they told her to do um, because the company that she works for is also considered uh, a commercial facility sector which is a, a, a critical infrastructure so therefore the fbi works with this company to to not just gang stalk now they now don't get it twisted the program is supposed to be they got different things they implement to protect it from you know attacks or whatever but part of that is us you know the humans who they consider a threat so therefore, we need to be harassed and gang stalked and watched and surveilled and just, you know, that's 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 how they do it, people. Um, next up on this list, this is the last one I'm going to highlight under commercial facilities sector. Um, it's retail stores. All right. So when you go to Walmart, all of those employees, all of the. The, 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 the like even the guys getting the carts in the parking lot. I've experienced that, you know, one of the time, the times in my program on the clock, they just happened to be in front of me with the whole row of carts blocking me in or, you know, slamming the carts into the, each other or they just happen to be in my line of sight, have to be walking past me or be around me. 
All right, security just happens to be slow rolling, which I have video of on my uh, YouTube page, you know, probably my uh, Instagram as well. Security just happens to appear slow rolling around me at one of these times. All right. This is if you, if you go to Walmart. And then not only that, not only the security and all the employees, this is a big public space. So now you also have customers and many of these customers work in uh, one of the 16 critical infrastructure industries listed um, within this program. So think about that. You have 16 industries and then you have all of these different uh, businesses and things of that nature and uh, businesses and places of employment within that 16 uh, uh, critical infrastructure list. So all is I mean, that's millions of people, man. And they all are connected to the program. So this is literally, you know, causing you to be an enemy of the state. They're making all of these people your enemy. They don't know you, but somebody higher up said that you are a threat that needs to be neutralized. And their way of neutralizing you are using these uh, harassment tactics. They have a certain protocol. They use these tactics to harass you and make your life difficult, make your life frustrating, trying to piss you off, trying to irritate you. That, that's pretty much what they do. That's what it's all about. Um, so, yeah, retail stores, also shopping malls. So we all know, you know, I, I have videos on my phone. I've, uh, you know, I've encountered security guards and even confronted them, and asked them about it. You know, the funny thing about it is I'm doing this video. I just spoke to one tonight. He act like he had no idea what I was talking about. No clue. Just, you know, not at all. But right after we spoke, he continued to do the same exact tactics, riding past me only at the times that I have recorded in my, you know, in my program that I've shown many, many times about what happens when these times are on the clock. Right after we had the discussion, we talked for almost five to ten minutes. He just denied everything. He had no clue what I was talking about. But then he dove right back into it after our discussion like we didn't just talk. So this is what we're dealing with. You know, just a fucking liar, you know, right to my face like it's nothing. So. That's that right there is a, is a list I want to give. Those are some examples um, within the uh, commercial facilities sector of the 16 infrastructure, 16 critical infrastructure lists uh, that the United States feels needs to be protected at all costs. And part of that protection is targeting people who are on this list, uh, which we call gang stalking. And that's why we feel it everywhere we go. Recap real quick. Hotels, motels, theme parks, amusement parks, parades, arenas, stadiums, zoos, museums, apartments, condos, storage units, retail stores such as Walmart, Target, Ross, whatever you wherever you go, any store you're going into, shopping malls, mall security, all the employees, and not and then you always remember with this one right here, with the commercial facility sector, it, it has other people. It's commercial, so there's gonna be other people there. Um, patronizing that vi that that uh, business, so those people more than likely are connected to one of these sectors their own themselves, you know, from whatever wherever they work. So they also are going to participate. So that's why you get that all encompassing feeling that everybody is, you know, gang. Everybody's involved in your gang stalking, but really, yeah, it is. That's the case. It's really true. You've been made an enemy of the state, and all of these people using today's technology, which wouldn't be possible without it, today's technology, these phones, they are alerted about you and what to do when they are in your presence. All right, so that's, that's the first one.